morning I think today we will talk on uh, combustion instability in chemical propellant rockets namely combustion instability in solid liquid and other types of rockets. But I thought in the last class we had not really finished hybrid therefore let me before coming to this topic just spend a couple of minutes on the hybrid rockets. The very name hybrid means it is a combination of two phases maybe a liquid and a solid or a gas and a liquid and so on. But what is normally used in hybrid is maybe a, a liquid as an oxidizer and solid as a fuel and you we all know no solid fuel is like polybutadiene HTP, B, P band and all that could be used. But essentially what is used is maybe a polybutadiene and normally it is hydroxy terminated polybutadiene which we used as a binder in solid propellant rockets. The liquid oxidizers which are used could be anything could be liquid oxygen could be let us put it down could be liquid oxygen could be nitric acid inhibited red fuming nitric acid could be N2O4 and extra maybe we talked in terms of flux we had liquid oxygen which was in which fluorine was added to make it more powerful and these are the liquid oxidizers but mainly solid fuel is essentially polybuted in which is HTPB. How will the construction look like? You have a cylinder, a case, you have a nozzle, you have the solid fuel which is kept over here could be any configuration let us take a star configuration or a circular configuration. I take a section over here this is my solid fuel and what is it I do I spray the liquid oxidizer onto the fuel and in case the liquid fuel like let us say IRFNA is hypergolic with respect to the fuel then it begins to react at the surface vapor is evolved and I have vapor which keeps coming out and here it is oxidizer rich here it is a fuel vapor which is coming out and therefore what is going to happen is here you have a stoichiometric mixture or a mixture between the oxidizer and the fuel vapor it burns and then you get the thrust this is the principle of hybrid essentially somewhat in between a solid rocket and a liquid rocket but in this case what happens is provided the surface is hypergolic the moment you inject it chemical reactions begin to occur the heat feedback to the surface generates the fuel vapor say hydrocarbon vapor and that hydrocarbon vapor mix mixes with the oxidizer and you get combustion taking place and that is exhausted through the nozzle and this is the principle of hybrid rockets right. In case the surface is not hypergolic with respect to the oxidizer then in that case I have to coat something on the surface which initially will start combustion by having a paste which is hypergolic with respect to the liquid oxidizer heat gets generated and once heat is getting generated thereafter it is the heat transfer namely the convective heat transfer which evaporates the fuel generates the fuel vapor mixes and goes over here. Therefore the controlling thing in these hybrid rockets is essentially mixing what is mixing at the surface you have hydrocarbon vapors mixes with the free stream of oxygen vapor because when I inject it this also due to the heat vaporizes and therefore mixing is sort of a problematic and what happened is there was one person by name Dr. Dadio in Germany and what he suggested was whenever we make hybrid rockets you know since mixing is a problem why not we put something like a turbulator. What is a turbulator let us again do it is very common in all engineering situations namely when I look at this particular thing getting fuel is getting evaporated here oxidizer is coming over here I maybe make this constriction over here in the form of let us say petal like petal is something like this I put this configuration over here in this hole over here and therefore this is let us say a turbulator and what happens when the gas is flowing across it it creates eddies and it helps to mix and therefore we need something like a turbulator normally for mixing the gases 
and so that combustion gets completed. Therefore, you know in the early stages whenever people were working with hybrid they never really used turbulator they got very low performance. After using turbulator somewhat mixing is better, but still the performance is not as good as in liquid propellant rockets, but it is better than solid fuel rockets. I think this is all about you know, but there is one distinct advantage in using hybrid rockets. What are the advantages? Let us say you have a solid fuel and the solid fuel has a crack in it or some opening in it. Therefore, the surface area increases and you are spraying liquid oxidizer onto it. Because the surface area is increasing, the pressure gets generated. When pressure gets generated, automatically the pressure drop across injector decrease is increased is decreased because pressure here is higher, this is constant pressure, pressure gets decreased and therefore, the flow rate of oxidizer decreases and therefore, it is self regulating. In other words, solid propellant rockets, if there is a crack, its surface area increases, pressure continues to increase. In the case of hybrid, if there is some surface defect, what happens is pressure gets generated, once pressure gets generated, automatically the pressure difference between pressure at injection and pressure in the combustion chamber now it is higher decrease increases and therefore the flow rate decreases if flow rate decreases automatically the thrust decreases and therefore i would say that the hybrid rocket is a little safer and it it can take certain surface defects and it is these things which prompted more recently a person a millionaire a british millionaire by name bert Rutan, Rutan, he formed a company known as Scaled Composites and he used hybrid rockets for ferrying people to space. Maybe he says space can be used for enthusiasts who are interested in looking. Therefore, he says it is something like a voyage or something like a place where you can go and view the earth from top and therefore, he used that white, white knight aircraft which I showed you in the last time. In the belly of it, he mounts a space capsule powered by a hybrid rocket and this hybrid rocket takes him you know the white knight aircraft goes up to 15 kilometers height from there he goes a little bit higher maybe people are able to see the earth from top and then it comes back in uh, uh, comes back to the earth and therefore the purpose of the hybrid rocket there is for ferrying people from 14 kilometers to the ground back and this is where the hybrid rocket is used the company which does it is a private company known as I think uh, scaled composites. Last week officially it was the launch pad was inaugurated in the desert in California. I think this is something which we can keep in mind. Therefore, I would say well hybrid rocket has not been very much used in practice. However, it is something like a convective heat transfer which vaporizes the propellant mixes and burns. It has lower performance than liquid propellant rocket. However, it is safer than many, many of the other types of rockets because it is self regulating and it, it is finding increased applications. I do foresee much more applications for hybrid rockets in the years to come. I think this is all about hybrid rockets. We can even think in terms of other propellant maybe flocks if you want very high performance maybe with with uh, metal uh, embedded in the fuel like maybe you could have some uh, some light metals let us say you you have maybe magnesium you have some lithium and other things you could react it and generate more thrust but what is generally used is uh, what is used by rutan in his space capsule is n2o4 as oxidizer and you have the HTPB as the fuel. I think this is all about hybrid rockets, but there is one problem with hybrid rockets because of the slow rate of reactions, it is very susceptible to combustion instability in the low frequency mode and I am going to talk about it right, right away. We will talk, it is susceptible to low frequency combustion instability. Maybe since this is our next topic, maybe we will not spend some time at this point in time. Maybe after studying what causes combustion instability, it is new for all of us. Let us study this and then come back and see what is the real problem over here. Maybe with this I go to this new topic, a very fascinating topic of 
combustion instability. I wrote it earlier, maybe I write it again because we must be glued on to this topic. Maybe I will start with a very small example and this example is not mine. It, this example was given in 1951 by one Professor Summerfield. He was at Princeton and he published a paper in 1951 in, in I think at that time AIA journal was not there, journal of I think rockets and aircrafts or something like that. As a pre, it was a, it was a journal which came much before AIA journal started coming, A journal of AIA started coming. You know in this paper he gives an example, I modify the numbers because his numbers were in FPS system and not that that easy to work on the board. Maybe I, I take a typical liquid propellant rockets, but as I say I follow what Professor Summerfield did in his particular paper. He says let us have a liquid propellant rocket, let the mean chamber pressure be 5 MPa, 5 mega Pascal. 5 mega Pascal is something like chamber pressure is 50 bar. Let the fuel and oxidizer both of them be injected into the chamber at let us say P injected and this value let it be 7.5 MPa. I just choose these numbers to illustrate some phenomenon. That means propellant is injected at a pressure of 75 atmospheres and the chamber pressure Pc is equal to 5 MPa or 50 bar. Now what, what is it we are talking of? Let us put it down on the board. Well we expect maybe pressure with respect to time it is burning steadily, I expect the chamber pressure to be always 5 MPa, right. This is what I would get, you know I start burning, it keeps on injecting propellant and something is leaving and why do you get a chamber pressure? After all you add some mass, let us say mass of propellant which is injected and how do you calculate the mass of propellant which is injected? You inject something that means you have injector orifices having total area A0. Let the CD value of the oxidizer and fuel orifices be the same CD into A0 into under root of 2 rho into you have P injected minus P chamber. This is the rate at which mass is injected right, so much kilograms per second okay. Under, under steady conditions and what we said is CD A0 2 into delta P by rho is the volume and multiplied by density C D A0 and this we must know all the time, right. And what is the rate at which gases are leaving m dot through the nozzle? It is leaving at the rate we have, we, this we know terribly P C into A T, right. This is the rate at which gases are leaving, so much kilograms per second. Therefore, we now say this is the value of A T and the number of holes for the fuel and oxidizer total number of area of injection is A0 all put together. Now I ask myself one question you know, see so far what did we say to get the equilibrium pressure mass injected is equal to the mass which is leaving. But I have a strange problem, the fuel or propellant which is injected takes some time to burn. Suppose I inject a parcel of propellants at this rate here, it is going to start burning after some time uh, because there has to be a delay, there has to be something like a combustion delay. Let, 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 let me go back on that side again because this point is important and this will be central to all our discussions. All what we are saying is there is a certain delay because whenever I inject something, maybe I inject a liquid it breaks into droplets, maybe fuel breaks into droplets, then it evaporates, the fuel and vapor mix together, then they react and then out comes the burning gases. That means this we said occupies a quite a tremendous amount of time, the vaporization takes time, atomization is fast, reaction may be fast, mixing before that also takes some time. Therefore, if I say the entire process of from injection to burning takes a time of let us say T delay, T due to combustion delay is T C seconds, then I need to make some changes in this equation. What is it I am telling? Something is entering, 
it has to form gases before it leaves the nozzle and therefore if I were to write uh, an equation which takes care of the rate of mass variations what is it I would be writing I would be writing nor under normal circumstances dm by dt the rate at which mass is getting accumulated in the chamber is equal to cd a0 under root 2 2 into density into p injected minus pc is the thing which is coming in and what is going out minus 1 over c star into pc into at over here but now I say this equation may not be really correct why because what comes out can happen only tc later or rather I must say the quantity which comes here is equal to t minus tc is what goes out at time t this is the equation let us say dm by dt mass at time t this leaves at time t but what should really burn is what is injected tc time earlier therefore this is my dynamical equation or this is my actual equation and to solve this equation is difficult but we must have a procedure and that is what we will be doing in this hour but therefore we find that there is a time delay before something happens and therefore let us get back to this example with this background let us come back to this example again what is it we are saying mass is injected therefore initially let us say chamber pressure is 5 bar and therefore I can now write the mass which is injected injected is equal to again I write cd a0 under root 2 rho into now I just put the units because after all it will be a con constant I have some chamber pressure I say is 5 injection pressure that means 7.5 minus 5 is the value or rather I say it is equal to k I take all the constant outside root of 2.5 is the mass of injected. I take all these constants k maybe I have to multiply by 10 to the power 6 over here all those things I take constant put it into the k value. Now therefore beneath it I therefore now, now write now plot the rate at which I am injecting the liquid in this and what is the rate I am injecting liquid I say this is my nominal value I call it as m dot of propellant which is getting injected nominal value is what I am injecting and I come I keep on injecting and this is the value I am injecting m dot p. Let at this particular instant of time t0 let the chamber pressure drop by let us say 0 0.5 that means this magnitude is 0 0.5 something happens in the chamber maybe there is some some problem with the injector or something happens within this chamber and therefore what is happening is I am now allowing the pressure to fall from 5 to 4.5 so instantaneous late falls let us just assume something like this happens therefore now my chamber pressure which is PC now becomes 4.5 MPa if it is 4.5 MPa my mass which is injected is going to be k times now 7.5 minus 4.5 which is 3 under root 3. Therefore if I were to put it in terms of the steady value of mp dot which was the steady value it is going to be mp dot into under root 3 divided by 2.5 which is equal to something like 1.2 times under root mp dot which is equal to 1.1 times the value of mp dot which is the nominal value at a steady that means all of a sudden I am injecting little more which is now 1.1 times m dot p over here. See the pressure has fallen because of that the quantity which is injected has now gone up by 1.1 times it takes a certain delay let me enlarge it say it takes tc time to evaporate mix and burn together and when it mixes and burns what is the chamber pressure I get originally I had when the nominal value was m dot p I had the chamber pressure which was given by 1 by c star into pc into at and now I get a value which is 1.1 times and therefore my chamber pressure 
will be equal to 1.1 times the value which was 5 earlier which means after this delay time it continues at this value after this delay time it increases to 1.1 into 5 which is 5.5 MPa. In other words at after this value of Tc let us now put it together the pressure will now increase to 5.5. What is now the implication? The implication is maybe at this point in time when I said the chamber pressure is 5.5, the mass which is injected is now going to be the value of K into under root, the supply pressure is still 7.5 minus 5.5 that is equal to K root 2. And therefore, if the mass injected has is now k root 2, the value of mass injected in terms of the nominal value which was mp dot which was based on the difference of 2.5 is now equal to mp dot into under root 2 by 2.5 which is equal to 0 0.8 under root of mp dot or rather this is equal to 0 0.9 99 so 81 of the old value mp dot which is the nominal value and therefore what is going to happen when the pressure increases the mass flow rate now drops to a value 0 0.9 of the old value corresponding to mp dot over here. Now what happens now it has come back to 0 0.9 and therefore this continues this liquid evaporates burns over a time Tc. until it burns nothing really happens and when this quantity burns over here the chamber pressure is now I get mass which is injected is 0 0.9 the vapor which is formed or the gases which is formed is 0 0.9 and therefore 0 0.9 into the value of 5 will be 4.5 the chamber pressure now drops to 4.5 again and this sequence now again it is 4.5 again after a delay time it increases goes over here goes over here and so on this fellow also goes to 1.1 again from 1.1 it falls to 1 and this delay is Tc and therefore you find that a momentary drop of 0.5 makes the chamber pressure oscillate between a value from 4.5 to 5.5 to 4.5 to 5.5 and out of a steady situation when you have this delay term what did you do you started getting oscillations well the oscillations are neutral in that maybe it keeps fluctuating between a value of let us say 4.5 to 5.5 whereas the nominal value before the, the test before when it falls down was 5 MPa. Is the process clear? I think if this is clear I think we would have understood some part of combustion instability namely a drop in chamber pressure whenever there is a delay causes this problem. I will come back to it let, let me give, give a physical example before I proceed with this because we are talking of something like combustion and all that you know we would have seen many many toys in the market I just brought one such toy here let, let, let me get back and show you this because it is very illustrative of the phenomenon you know you, you have these toys which are available in the market and what you do is you just take this toy you bend it once it will keep on oscillating up and down maybe I put it on the table I, I, I push it here it goes it keeps on it keeps on rollicking up and down it is in a state of neutral oscillations why does it have to do this let us take a look at what is the construction of this particular one there are very various ones maybe there is a small marble here that is what is making this particular noise let us say I shift it when I shift it there is a, a sling and a, a marble over here when I shift it here the marble comes and hits over here and the hitting is much before it has bent over here and therefore this fellow comes and hits here and gives a force to this but when it hits it rebounds back and even before it could come here it comes here rebounds here that means there is a delay between the forcing function 
and the motion there is a time delay and it is this time delay which keeps this oscillating once and once you oscillate it keeps on going. This particular toy is different from a toy in which at the bottom you have a mass sometimes because of center of gravity you do. But in this case there is a marble inside and it is this which keeps it going up and down and it, the friction essentially stops it and it is exactly the same thing what is happening here. You inject propellants there is a time delay the time delay precedes whatever be the change which happens and this is what happens in the case of an one case of instability right. Can I say this is understood? If this is understood let me go back to the next example. I just do once more and then I will say we can generalize it. Let us now assume that now I have another chamber, another rocket chamber in which my, my injection pressure chamber pressure is still the same thing I keep it at at let us say 5 bar 5 mega Pascal. Let me reduce the injection pressure to 7 MPa and ask myself what is going to happen in this case. Now I do not need to repeat much all what I want to do is maybe make these two plots maybe the chamber pressure as a function of time maybe the mass which is getting injected as a function of time the initial pressure is let us say 5, 5 MPa and maybe at time T0 I we reduce the chamber pressure like in, like in the previous example I reduce the value to 4.5 that means I decrease it by 0.5 to 4.5. Now what is going to happen in this case? What is going to be the change? Let us say corresponding to 5 MPa I have a steady value corresponding to m dot p which is steady. Now I have reduced it the chamber pressure from 0.5 to 4.5 and therefore I use this space to work out. Now I say m dot which is now injected m dot p is going to be the value of k under steady conditions it is equal to k root 2 and now this is the steady value when the chamber pressure has got reduced to 4.5 what is going to happen is it is going to become k into 7 minus 4.5 that is equal to k into under root 1.25 no 2.5 or rather the new value of mp dot is going to be under root of 2.5 by 2 which was original which is equal to under root of 1.25 and, and therefore this under root of 1.25 1.21 will be something like 1.12 and therefore now I find that the at this point T0 the it increases to 1.12 of the value of MP dot and what is the repercussion? Well, it is going to burn, it is going to take some TC time to burn and once it gets combusted all the delays over then at that point of time the pressure increases. What will be the value of pressure? It is 5 that is the new value of pressure will be the value of 5 into 1.22 which is equal to something like instead of having uh, I am sorry it is 1.12, 11 11s are 121 and therefore it is 1.12 over here and therefore this is going to give me 5.6 MPa therefore the pressure now goes up to 5.6 MPa and when it is 5.6 MPa well the mass flow rate now decreases and it becomes equal to with respect to the steady difference of 2 now it is going to be 7 minus 5.6 divided by 2 over here that is equal to under root of 0 0.7 1.4 divided by 2.7 the value is 1.12 then 
it 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 has burnt over here then it has burnt over here after this maybe the i have a delay time during which it comes the pressure now comes to 4.2 and then after 4.2 it goes still further and therefore it could even diverge it could keep on increasing the value and here if i were to put it down it is 0.84 this value 0.7 is 0.84 and from 0.84 it picks up and goes to 1.18 and then it comes still further and it keeps increasing and therefore even the oscillations need not be neutral it could keep on increasing depending on this pressure difference i do a third problem in which i choose this value as maybe 9 mpa this is 5 mpa and what i get for this pressure which i don't need to do at this point in time is maybe i again start with 5 pressure of 5 with respect to time i drop it from 5 to 4.5 then in that case what happens is it goes like this it goes like this it goes like this maybe it doesn't go all the time it is it keeps decreasing and it comes back to the neutral in other words why did it happen because i had much higher flow rate compared to this and i do the same sequence i can trace that the pressure with respect to time follows a decreasing trend and let me put the numbers through because we shouldn't go too too fast also 4.5 the value goes to 5.3 the value comes back to 4.8 and and so on you know it will be something like 5.1 and so on it will it comes back to this therefore what we have done, just done is we have taken a simple case wherein we varied the injection pressure kept the chamber pressure constant and we found either the oscillations are so formed that it keeps on oscillating in a limit cycle mode the same amplitude or else you we we started with this the for let's start with this again it could either go and diverge out like this and ultimately explode or i could start like this and it keeps decreasing with with time and it reaches this either it could be neutral it could diverge it could keep on increasing just like you have equilibrium because this is neutral this is diverging this is something like a decaying oscillations or a stable system it's possible to imagine all these things in this and the the example which i say is very similar to what we are saying keeps on oscillating we have an injector you have a combustion chamber and the nozzle you are injecting something over here and what is it if i were to denote it i say i have an injector over here and what happens after injection i have the process of atomization taking place atomization then i have vaporization of the propellant taking place after vaporization i have mixing taking place after mixing i have chemical reactions taking place and then the gases leave through the nozzle right now in a in in a bipropellant injector that means when i have fuel and oxidizer maybe i have a fuel injector fuel holes i have oxidizer holes over here i call it as injector over here i the fuel injector maybe creates the fuel drops and it vaporizes first it vaporizes the oxidizer drops vaporizes the vapors come and mix in the chamber maybe this is also in the chamber but thereafter you have mixing and reactions taking place over here and the mixed one is what in gets injected out of the chamber during this process of combustion if there is some oscillation namely p prime it gets back into your injector over here this is where you are injecting p injector you are injecting p injector over here this p prime gets modulated in your injector and therefore you are getting some some change thing which is coming into your chamber again your vaporization gets affected and this becomes something like a feedback circuit in other words a change in the downstream value of p prime due to mass generation gets coupled to your intake to the injector 
that means it is a feed system which gets affected and therefore this type of combustion oscillations is known as feed system coupled oscillations. Let us now physically try to again go through what little we have done so far in some other way. We will tell ourselves well I have something like a tank which supplies the propellants into the liquid propellant combustion chamber fuel oxygen I do not draw any of the intermediate things all of us know the differences. I have an injection pressure here, I have the injector here spraying it, I have the PC over here, I have the injector pressure over here, I, I take the same values on both the sides and now what is happening? Any pressure changes which is happening creates a differential flow over here. In other words, this is what gives me the feedback that is the pressure changes here reflects on the flow of propellant into the chamber from the feed system that means feed system is influenced and such type of oscillations are known as feed system coupled oscillations. Therefore, it is known as feed system oscillations or rather the oscillations depend terribly on T residence and time of delay T residence depends on the L star of the motor therefore, some people also call it as L star oscillations. In other words all what we have seen is it is quite possible when I have the injector pressure drop which is less than some threshold value then it is quite possible for me instead of having a steady value of pressure to get started and have a diverging pressure. And these oscillations are linked to the feed system because the feed is what gives you the pressure drop over here. If I have a very high pressure here I will not get these oscillations and therefore, it is known as feed coupled oscillations. Now, let me see whether I can get similar things for solid propellant rockets. Let me do a simple argumentative explanation. Let me consider the case wherein I have let us say a solid propellant rocket. I have a propellant over here which is burning. We will try to go through the same arguments I put for liquid propellant rocket. Let, let the chamber pressure be PC. This is let us say a section over here is the propellant grain outer diameter. Let us say the chamber pressure is a high value, steady value burning it is progressive maybe it is going to go up, but it is a progressive steady value. At some point of time let us see that the pressure drops some way pressure drops let us say. If the pressure drops what is going to be the effect? Would I have a cascading effect like what I had in liquid propellant rockets if I have a TC over here a delay? Let us see what happens when pressure drops. The heat from the gases is still seeing the propellant that means the propellant surface is still hot and it has a memory of the higher pressure over here. Higher pressure means the flame is nearer to the propellant surface therefore, more heat is gen generated and therefore, the propellant surface gets more heated than at lower pressure. Therefore, I find yes at a when the pressure is higher maybe the heat flux or the heat load on the propellant is higher even though the pressure drops it still retains memory of the old pressure and it does not immediately relax to a lower heat flux at the surface. That means, I say point 1 retains memory of old pressure old value of higher pressure old value of pressure. Number 2 the pressure has dropped if the pressure has dropped what is going to happen the flame front that is the that is the distance of the flame from the surface uh, goes a little bit further and since the pressure depends the pressure governs the number of molecules the rate of reaction decreases. If the rate of reaction decreases well the rate of generation of hot gases decreases 
or else the velocity decreases and if the velocity decreases the residence time increases. Let me go through this a little, little more in little more detail. All what we said was whenever I have a propellant surface, I have a flame which is standing off at a certain depth. I reduce the pressure therefore the flame standoff increases. But the surface still has memory of this, this is point 1. Now this has gone up over here, the pressure has decreased, if pressure has decreased the, the chemical reaction rate has decreased, if chemical reaction rate has decreased the rate at which mass of the gases is getting generated has decreased, the velocity has decreased, if velocity has decreased for the same distance I get more residence time, residence time has increased. If residence time has increased, the time taken for chemical reactions to get completed is faster, therefore residence time increasing results in more value of the rate of mass generation. Now the surface still retains memory of the past, it is still hot, therefore it is still pr producing gases at the old rate and therefore even though the pressure has fallen, it takes some time for the surface to come back to it the present state and therefore what is going to happen is the, the pressure increases because I, inc I, have, I still have more mass of gases which are going up, I, I have higher mass flux rather than this value and therefore I get a higher value of pressure. At higher value of pressure, well what happens is the memory of the surface is with respect to the older value of pressure for which the mass generation rate is lower the residence time is less, if residence time is less I have smaller chemical reaction time to generate gases and therefore it again falls back, again I have this and therefore the same thing is possible even in a solid propellant rocket. Namely whenever there is a delay due to the thermal lag at the surface and we have the residence time getting changed, I can get this oscillation and this is known as L star oscillations in solid propellant rocket. Why do I say L star? It depends, if I have a very small rocket in which the value of volume by throat area is small, well the value of Tc compared to res T residence will be larger and therefore the oscillations are more profound and that is why it is known as L star oscillations. Let us focus on this particular slide over here. We in this slide I show the value of L star as a function of chamber pressure and I define the regions of instability that is L star mode of oscillations and the stable region. What is it we are telling? If the value of L star is small, well the time of residence of the gases, T residence of the gases in the chamber is small. When T residence is small, the value of Tc by T residence is larger and therefore the 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 combustion is more likely to be unstable and therefore I have the, uh, the instability region corresponding to small values of L star. If the chamber pressure is smaller, the chemical reaction time is larger, the chemical reactions take more time to go to completion, Tc is larger and therefore I have an instability region which is over here and a stable region corresponding to larger values of L star and larger values of chamber pressure. Therefore, we find that for solid propellant rockets it is necessary to provide a, either a large value of L star or a large value of chamber pressure for stable operation to take place. Let me go and illustrate this further, maybe if I have an L star instability, I have oscillations in chamber pressure which are seen over here, this is L star instability. But very often we also find that when a motor is ignited and the ignition is not that good, we sort of get some spikes like this, this is the ambient pressure and you get a small spike in pressure, the motor gets ignited but gets quenched. But however, the motor grain is still hot and thereafter this heat or the temperature in the grain again ignites the motor and again I get another pressure spike, another spike, something like a train going chuffing all along, chuff, 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 you get these small oscillations in pressure which are due to ignition and hang fire situation rather than L star oscill oscillations or L star instability which occurs when the chamber pressure has a finite value. 
This will help us to differentiate between L star instability and chuffs which are essentially due to an ignition phenomenon not, not a good ignition whereas L star instability comes because of the competition between the chemical reaction time and residence time when the time is large and you, you have these uh, reflexes from the propellant absorbing energy and de getting delayed something which I thought I should at this point in time I should differentiate is maybe whenever I talked in terms of feet coupled oscillations in a liquid propellant rocket or in terms of L star oscillations in a solid propellant rocket all what I am saying is the pressure in the chamber or within the grain at this point the pressure is the same at this point the pressure is the same at this point the pressure is the same within the chamber the pressure is the same there is no variation in pressure that means I am talking of maybe the entire bulk entire bulk of chamber has same gas pressure. What did I do? I injected something at P injection. I have PC over here, PC, PC, PC and it is exhausting out. That means the entire volume or the entire bulk of propellant is at the same pressure and therefore such oscillations are also known as bulk oscillations. Something very similar to the toy I showed you. The entire body is moving. It is not that one part, not that my hand moves and the other hand is stationary. But in practice, what happens? I could have a different pressure here, I could have a different pressure here. And that is what happens when I talk. I am talking to you and as I am talking, you know, it takes some time for my signal to reach you. Therefore, it is quite possible pressure instead of being a function of time alone could be a function of distance and time. And therefore, whatever we have discussed so far relates to a something like a lump mass assumption wherein I take the entire volume to oscillate in unison which may not really be true. Therefore, we must move to something which will differentiate between pressure at the different points. Let us think of this situation how easy would it be to do that. Maybe we will illustrate it through some physical examples. Let us let us consider the following. Let us consider let us say maybe I am talking to you some acoustic oscillations. Maybe I am talking over here how does the signal come to you? A series of compressions followed by rarefactions followed by compression followed by rarefaction right. In other words if I were to plot it what is it I get? I get a region wherein I get compression followed by rarefaction, compression followed by rarefaction. In fact this is something as a sound wave and how do I represent pressure as a function of time and I can now write this is a sine wave after all this is one cycle of oscillation that is one wavelength of oscillations and this is my distance as distance moves my compression, rarefaction, compression, rarefaction travels and therefore I can write this as P is equal to maybe some amplitude A sine of lambda corresponds to 2 pi, 2 pi by lambda into x. This is the equation to a sound wave which is propagating and sound wave means a disturbance wave P prime is equal to P hat or A sine 2 pi by lambda x. But there is no traveling component in this, this is just a wave of compression and this. But I was telling you that the wave travels. If the wave is going to travel at speed of sound that is A meters per second where A denotes the speed of sound. Well after let us say after a time t after I start the wave should come over here right. That means over a time t the wave would have moved a distance a t where A is the velocity of sound. If that is the case the equation to a traveling wave should be P prime is equal to A sin 2 pi by lambda into x minus at right. Now what happens? Now when I look at this particular thing 
and now I tell myself in a rocket chamber, what is a rocket chamber? It is something like a cavity. Why do I say it is a cavity? Well, I have the injector side over here or head end of a solid propellant rocket. I have the nozzle over here. We found this very rapid changes in density here. Therefore, the throat acts as if it were a, 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 a surface itself. And therefore, whenever some wave travels up over here, this looks at it as if it were a solid surface. It reflects back. The, the wave is as if it were in an enclosure in which wave moves up over here, reflects over here, comes back. And therefore, there is an interaction of let us say an incident wave plus a reflected wave. But I know the equation to a wave can be written like this. Now, what will be the equation to a reflected wave if the incident wave I say is P i is given by this? The equation to a reflected wave should be it is moving in the opposite direction. Therefore, it should be A sin of 2 pi by lambda into minus x minus a t or minus a sin 2 pi into x plus a t. I want us to think a little bit more and the thinking is maybe I brought a flute. I always illustrate combustion instability problem through this. I have something like I, I, I blow into this. Why does it make noise? Why should a flute make noise? After all, I am blowing steady still it makes a noise. Similarly, if I have a whistle, a whistle is nothing, similar thing at the what is where I am blowing. I blow into this, it, it still makes noise. Why does it make noise? Let us try to understand this problem as a prelude to solving this and if this part is clear, maybe we will be able to relate it. Let us schema, schematically show a flute and ask ourselves what happens. After all, you have something in which I am blowing air. I have something like a step over here. Let us let, let's, let's, let's be very clear about it. I have something like a step over here. I have some holes here. What is it I do? I blow air here. When I blow air, I get some eddies because all of a sudden there is a change here. Some disturbances are generated. And when disturbances are generated, they move in the chamber over here. It sees an open part here where it gets reflected back. And therefore, a column of interaction between the forward running wave and backward running wave is created. And that creates some resultant wave which amplifies the sound. And if I were to plug one, let us say I, I plug all the holes here. I have something like six holes. I plug it, still it makes noise. That means, but it makes a different sound noise. In which case, I just have a chamber here in which something is happening. When I open something, my net reflection is somewhere earlier and therefore, I can change my character of wave formed by incident plus reflected disturbances. And exactly the same thing happens in the case of a whistle. What happens in the case of a whistle, let us say? You know, let us sketch it out. You, you find the same phenomenon in this. I have a hole here. What is it I do? I push air. It creates some disturbances here. Some disturbances are generated. I have the waves moving in so round like this and it is this which functions as a resonator. And why does it resonate? I have for forward and re reflected waves coming. In other words, when I have a chamber, I could have waves not only moving in this direction, but if I take a section, I have a cylindrical section, waves could also move in the tangential direction, waves could also move radial direction. And this is what leads to disturbances in a chamber. And if these disturbances were to couple with the combustion taking place, well, I could have instability. In this way, we understand about oscillations in the chamber pressure and also about instability in rockets 
in the bulk and wave modes. You know, it is seen that it is quite simple. We, when the pressure is uniform across the chamber, we say that the oscillations or instability is in the bulk mode, while if the pressure varies along the length of the chamber and pressure waves travel in the chamber, we say it is the wave mode of instability. We will not proceed further, but those of you who are interested in this fascinating area should get into some more details of different types of instabilities and different methods of controlling combustion instability in rockets. What we do is in the next class, we will take a look at electrical rockets. Thank you.